Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I was um I was checking out our last conversation. Like our last uh so our last conversation was actually here in Portugal. Um, yeah. where we re I recorded an episode. But there was another one before that, uh which I think is the most relevant one, which I think it was uh, something like April Exactly. Or something. Yeah, I April yeah. 12th. Very nice. Uh April 12th and it's called I call it a therapeutic phone call. I was just realizing. Oh yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. And like you basically gave me the motivation for the course. I mean, I had the motivation, but you right. like helped me see. You know, so that was awesome. I, I think. And that, look where we are now. Yeah, it, it's funny because I was listening to that, and it was also, I believe, in that episode, in that conversation, that I, you also gave me the motivation to start accepting sponsorships in the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and now I have sponsorship, sponsorships in the podcast. So I think it was a very and important how is it going? conversation. It's going how good. Is it going? It's going good, man. I, I had no idea. Coming from, you know, having the community where it's so hard to get people to pay 10 bucks per month. Yeah. And then suddenly start selling ads. I realized that people like, they just, they just pay for ads. They don't. Yeah. So you make how many? How much do you make uh, per episode now, or like per month, or something? So I only. That. I only started, I believe, in November. And I started yeah. big. I started with um, Simon uh, from Feed Hive. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. I nice. once I, I think the first pricing I put it was like sixty bucks per episode or something, yeah. and he immediately bought four slots. It was like, okay, awesome. let me buy four slots. I was like, whoa. <laughs> four slots i mean that's crazy i'm like for i've never made any money with the podcast right or only a few bucks yeah yeah from people um there was like patreons and something like donating that. yeah exactly and and then i started like increasing so i uh my current prices to all my last sale was at uh, 100 bucks per episode uh not sorry uh, 80 bucks per episode oh shit um, awesome and it's it's not that hard to sell like I no. I need to sell it though. I need to like approach people and say, "Hey, yeah. uh, I have this podcast. I open up for sponsorship sponsorships." But yeah, but it's... the podcast is growing though, so it's awesome. Like the podcast is growing. Yeah. So it's it's, so it's like a beautiful, uh, you know, virtuous cycle. It's positive. Yeah, that's something that I was I was not expecting. Uh, there was a consequence of having uh, sponsorships I did not expect, which is. First of all, it gives more credibility to the podcast and people yeah. take it more seriously. And second, it also makes me more motivated to create great content. Yeah, you know? of course. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, to also like spread it more and, and to get more people to listen to it. I'm more committed to that because I know the more people listen to it, the more money I can ask. So yeah, that's, that's I was not expecting that 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 would be a consequence. So yeah, the podcast is kind of growing. Um, I still love doing it, and I've been like increasing the prices of the sponsorship of the slots. So I, I sell a bunch of them, and then I I increase the price, and then I sell a bunch of them, and I increase the price, and then until I I don't know until like someone suddenly yeah says, you like, keep <laughs> keep doing that until you can't yeah. yeah you keep doing that makes sense. So yeah, then that's so good to hear that. Yeah, I'm glad to see it. Because, like, you're also growing the community. So, like, your revenue is uh, growing, still still growing, like, going slowly but steadily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the community, actually, um, I, I'm, I'm still working on it, but not as much. Because I kind of realized that it's really hard to make good money with that. So, actually, it, it was growing, but then it started going down a little bit. And now it's kind of maintaining, going a little bit up. I, I made a bunch of changes. Um, I like it. Like people are very active there still, and we have a bunch of things going on. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think it's not that much. I, th I don't even know what how much money I'm making from the community now. But it's like maybe four hundred MRR or something. Um, yeah. So now I kind of spread my. I have like community. Then I have uh, the sponsorships. I, I, I now start doing also a little bit of freelancing, which is like great because. It pays really well. Yeah, way better. It's amazing, and it's such a peace of mind to to have a little bit more money. 
you know, I know that, okay, at least now I can pay the bills and I, I can rest a little bit. It's not still amazing, but it just helps. So Yeah, and it's a nice balance because you have that plus the other thing that brings you maybe like, that, that you can take to like 1,000 MR, or, you know, eventually with the podcast or something, it can get there, plus freelance. Yeah. So I feel like it's a nice balance that only having one or the other, which can be more stressful. Yeah, exactly. So I started spreading th spreading a little bit more uh, more income, like a proper indie maker, and uh, <laughs> and I guess you did the same. So yeah, tell me. So we spoke on April twelfth, and I guess uh, you you just said that kind of motivated you a little bit to start really thinking about it, about the course, and. One interesting thing that we uh, spoke about was that you were afraid of being a fraud. You, you didn't want it to be that guy that uh, just yeah, makes money a with a course, right? Uh, did that yeah. change? You know what helped me in that conversation is that, you, that you told me, yeah, but like, if you have some value to bring to people, like it's positive, it's not a scam. It's nothing mm -hmm. like if you have something to bring, it's awesome. Yeah. And that was, that was really something that helped me. And so I really focused on that. Like, you know, that's why I spent so long building it. That took me five months to like prepare, record, edit. Yeah. I just work on that and nothing else for five months. Cause I really didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be a fraud or anything like that. Yeah. So, and then, you know, we launched it, uh, it it's working. Uh, now we sell like a couple every day, between two and five per day. Wow. So that's amazing, you yeah. know. Uh, and, and yeah, and for me, what changed is, I guess it's just, I, I found the right balance because I feel I still feel like it's good to teach people. Like if you can do a course and you can help people, like, I mean, as long as you can help people, you shouldn't basically refrain from it. It's stupid. Right. Yeah. Uh, even if you have, you know, bias against being a course guy or whatever. And I think, wait, Lucy is knocking on the door. <laughs> I'm not realizing I'm in a pod. It's okay. She can join. Okay. She, <laughs> she apologizes. No, she's sick. Uh -huh. She apologizes. She's like, sorry. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Anyway, uh, but, you know, I'm not abandoning her. She's still good enough to not need <laughs> me at this time. <laughs> She's like, uh, I'm please sorry, help I'm me. Dying. I'm in the podcast. Like, <laughs> but I'm dying. No. I, <laughs> I'm recording. I'm recording. Okay, so, so you, you can die. But Give me some space. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> respect. You know, respect the space. No, no, that wasn't like that. But anyway. Yeah. I guess what really helped me is I'm not giving up on the startup. Like I, we are working super hard on Logology right now, trying to make it better and, you know, pivoting and all that. And I think what helps me is that I want to still do that. And it actually motivates me because now I'm thinking, and if I turn Logology into, you know, something that makes 10K a month, then I can make a course about helping people do the same. Yeah. You know, and now if I see it more as a positive, as like, I'm accomplishing something, like accomplish, like, when I grew my Twitter account, it was a big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Then I made a course to teach that and help people, which helps support me in the end and also helps people. Yeah. And now it's actually giving me momentum to try to take Logology even further and make it a bigger success, more significant, like at least 10K per month. Mm -hmm. And then I can maybe teach that to people yeah, and that's going to be course. a beautiful you know, cycle. I think, I think it's to do both. It's beautiful. I think the thing I was afraid of is like, you know, all these people teaching courses, but like they haven't accomplished anything. They're just teaching right. because they know it makes money, but it's not, you know, it's not real. Mm -hmm. And so, and the good side of that is that people told me that, like, th that's the reason why the course is successful is like so much word of mouth now. Like I don't really talk about it, but like, dude, I sell so much because of this, because like, I mean, I had the big launch because that I prepared yeah. that got a few hundred sales plus a black Friday. Like I had a big plan to get lots of sales. But beyond those sales now, it's all it's world organic. of mouth and people yeah. saying it's the best course. I got yeah, so, sorry. so many yeah. great feedback uh, in the community. Uh, a lot of people oh, were yeah. just saying, awesome. yeah, you, you need to listen to this course and it's so good. And 
um, I got a lot of a lot of people telling me that I should listen to it, and I, I um, so yeah, people really enjoy it, and I I did I did watch it, and it's really good. It's really you you really go into the detail of explaining your whole yeah. Twitter process, and and you split it really well. So the um, for the ones that did not uh, buy the course yet, it's the the visuals are simple. Right, as you just said, it's it's you with with a background, yep. a black background, and you're just speaking. And sometimes you have some visuals, like you go to a website, you show Twitter, for instance, and then in the end you have like a graphics or basically some key points or some takeaways from each episode. Yeah. But it's it's really well. It's very easy to understand, and you you could you could really see that you you had a lot of work to like script it really well. You probably did multiple takes uh, per episode and to find out exactly how to explain certain concepts to people. And it's really like a master course of Twitter. You explain everything and uh, yeah, so, so much attention to detail. And I would love to like understand the whole like process of building such a course, right? Because this is not just starting the camera and start speaking, I think you really took some time to write everything. At least that's my feeling. Like write everything down, split it into chapters. Like how was, how was the process? Like before actually starting to film it, what did you do? So the first thing I did is I wrote the landing page. Okay. Interesting. Because I wanted to see in my head, okay, can it be engaging? Can it be interesting? Can it be problem solving a big problem? Mm -hmm. So I started with the landing page until I had so I mean, at least a copy. So at least I had an idea of like what I thought could mm -hmm. sell, you know, because I was already interviewing people, asking questions, what are your problems with Twitter? Like I actually asked in, uh, you know, when I be entrepreneur, yeah. I asked people, what's your main mm -hmm. problem with Twitter? And I kind of like compiled uh you know the the answers and then i started making a landing page about what would be the ideal course to solve these problems what would be the bullet points and like the value props and then i was like okay i need to make a course to solve that now now that i have the selling i i want to have the product right. you identified the and problems I, right like what are the problems yeah, so it's yeah, basically yeah. the same as as building yeah. a SaaS or a software or something oh right? exactly i had the exact same approach yeah focus on problems find two or three core features. Right. So that was the core problem. So the core problems were like, I don't understand why I don't get engagement. So explain mm -hmm. why. Uh, and also, I waste all of my time on Twitter and it's still like it's going nowhere. So that's like the routine to help you, you know, uh, put your time in the right places. And then there was like, I can't come up with tweets. So there's the whole writing framework that I also mm -hmm. added. Uh, but... Yeah, so I started like this. But then I never thought of doing a video course. I wanted to do a book because I love writing. Because yeah. you see me, I tweet. Yeah, right. I love writing. And I spent one month trying to write it. When I went to Lisbon, actually, I was writing the course every day uh, as I imagined it in a book. And I kept thinking, okay, this needs to be as exciting to read as my tweets. So, like, you never need, you shouldn't never get bored. Right. So I was spending, I remember, like, one chapter was, like, only three paragraphs. Like, you could read the whole chapter and, like, one minute, but it was so good. Mm -hmm. But like, it took me two days to write, uh, to make it good. So then I realized, I, I talked to a friend of mine and he told me that I should do a video because it's easier uh, to, you can get by with a bit more mistakes where like when you do a book, you have to write it perfectly. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna, so eventually I decided to do video. So by then I had all the list of my chapters. I didn't write the content, but I had an outline of most things. But then, you know, because you know me, I'm still a perfectionist. I, I didn't script anything because I don't want to sound mm -hmm. robotic. So every time I had a chapter that I wanted to record, and there's like uh, about 20, 23, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, 23 in the main course, uh, in the big, like a big uh, advanced version. Um, every chapter, I remember I spent about two hours recording and doing take after take. And finding my thinking as I was doing it. Because I wanted to be spontaneous. I wanted to feel like I'm just talking to you and telling you what I know. It feels really and spontaneous. So in the end... It's, it does feel very spontaneous. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And because yeah. I want it to be engaging. Because, because to, for example, me, I'm bored so easily. I have a hard time listening yeah. to a course. So I want it to be engaging. And so in the end, I think I recorded more than 30 hours. And then I had to do the edit, which I had never right. done in my life. So it took me at least 60 hours to do the edit, uh, to have a clean edit. So that was like shit ton of time. Then I also had the preparation before, like learn about lighting, uh, you know, yeah. sound. Uh, I had a small studio set up, you know, kind of like informal in, in how our did bedroom. You, how did you learn like that? He helped me with. I just went on YouTube for one week and I just <laughs> was like, I spent 30 hours watching YouTube videos uh, about lighting, about uh, how do you do that. I bought about $500 of gear. Uh, I didn't buy a camera because like, it's too expensive. So I just used an iPhone. <laughs> but, I, but it's a good camera, right? But uh, I bought like, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, like since we started making some money, uh, we had bought the first thing we bought with Blogology was like a phone for yeah. Lucy because she had an iPhone for like an iPhone, I think iPhone SE, but like the original SE, like yeah. just really shit, like completely not working anymore almost. And so then we got her a nice small modern iPhone and then we used that, you know, to, to film. So like I had to buy about like three stands, uh, three or four different lights. Uh, then we had a big, you know, we bought a big sheet of paper to put it on the wall to paint, to make the background. So I bought a couple of t-shirts because I wanted to have a nice t-shirt uh, to look good. Then so like overall it was like $500, which was a good, it seemed like an investment, but not too much that if we failed, yeah. we would regret it. Because if I had spent like 2K on a nice camera and all that to have like fancier uh, display, it would have been mm -hmm. pretty useless and a bigger risk. So I didn't want to do that. So yeah, a lot of work. It's incredible. Man. A lot of work went like, into it. Do you it. think people understand how much work went to, into into doing such a course? Well, a lot of people told me that you can see there's yeah. a lot of work. A lot of people told me that, and I think you know if you compare to different courses, you can see that it's one of the ones with the most mm -hmm. work into it, and that has some value. Like I think that's why people recommend it. Uh, a lot of people also tell me that. Uh, they had taken other Twitter courses and they really loved mm -hmm. mine even more. Like they can see like it's even more in depth and they learn more things. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, people could see that there was a preparation, but I, for instance, I've never thought of, of that, of like, yeah, he needs to understand lighting and, and the, the, the recording of the sound and how to face the camera. And like, I, because for me, when I was watching it, I thought, okay, yeah, he, he had to, it's a lot of work to, Take everything that you have in your mind and write it down in a way that is clear. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, for sure, I knew that it was a lot of work. But then uh, all the preparation on how to make the the video part of it, it's uh, I've never thought of that. Because like for, for me, when I started this podcast and now when I go back and listen to my first episodes, they are shit, like the quality of the sound, everything, okay, uh, yeah. because I was just figuring things out. And, and it took me a long time to reach it. But for you, you had only had one chance, right? So you need to do it right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, That's like it. what you just told me of like spending one whole week trying to figure out how to properly set up the lights and transform your house into a studio is something that didn't even cross my, my mind, but it's it's obvious now, yeah. But it's a different type of product. That's, that's because like, yeah. you can actually figure it out along the way. And I think, you know, once I had unlocked with this call that we had that I was going to do it, then I knew it could be successful because, uh, you know, I know I was already good at yeah, getting traffic yeah, to Logology yeah. from Twitter, like between 5 and 10K percent per month. Mm. And I knew by looking at other people like Daniel Vassalo or Arvid that a course converts way more. So I knew that if I just, because for example, now you can see a link to my course on my pin yeah. tweet and in my bio. So I knew that if I just keep doing my tweeting thing you, like, like usual, but I have a killer product that sells more, mm -hmm. then I'm going to sell. And I'm going to sell long term. Because a lot of people told me that I was just going to sell on launch. Because yeah. people assume that's how it works. But I never thought in that way because with Twitter, yeah, I always managed exactly. to get tons of traffic to my website every month. So I knew it was going to happen with the course. And that's the same right. that's happening. Like We're like January 12th and we're almost at 3K with the course Whoa. this month. That's it's, awesome. It's incredible. Yeah, that's huge. It's incredible. That, yeah. 
that's like yeah. that's like three or four times what logology was doing when yeah. i was promoting it heavily and that's just because you know it's the I, I have the same number of traffic as before with logology which is that crazy. now the which product is, an, is an, more uh, appealing i remember from the our last conversation you said that you were breaking 8k people to logology from twitter yeah and then and this is every, every month, month and yeah. what is interesting is our first conversation like just in the beginning i think you had 5k uh, around 5k followers then in this uh, therapeutic call which was a few months after you are at 25k and now you are at 50 something k yeah um so you just doubled yeah. it from from april uh, in less in less than a year Oh, so yeah, it's it's in incredible, um, and yeah, it, this also kind of I knew this when I was talking with you uh, in our in that in that episode. I knew that you could be making much more money than you were with only logology, right? Yeah, because you're yeah, already bringing too, the yeah. traffic. You were solving thinking, the mo the hardest problem. Yeah, that's right? it. Getting traffic. So now yeah. you just need to figure out what these people need and and build it for them, and uh, and that's what you did with the course. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I worked so hard on it because I was right. pretty convinced. Like, I wasn't getting my hopes up. I was like, okay, if we just make like, if we sold like one per day, mm -hmm. that would be awesome. Because that would be enough if you add it with logology to make a living with Lucy. So that was all like, you know, we're always focused on surviving. So if we can just survive, it's enough. So I wasn't getting my hopes up. But at the same time, I was like, everything points to this can be huge. Like this can be like, because I have the audience, I have the traffic and I have understood the right. problem of people. So if I make a killer product, like good landing page, good product, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. it should work. So no, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's awesome that it did, <laughs> you know? So awesome. you, you started recording. Uh, and one thing we talked about in the, in the last, in our last talk is that, you said also that logology takes a lot of your time, right? And uh, you also didn't want to yeah. take, the, I think that was one of the reasons why you didn't want to do the course right away. You didn't want oh, to yeah, take yeah, your yeah. focus True. out of logology, but you just told me that you spent yeah. so many, like this effort. So oh, yeah. how did you split your tasks and uh, your attention? So, you know, I was, I was talking, yeah, I was mostly worried about Lucy because she was worried I would give up on logology and just do something else and mm. do the course. Because it's her baby, right. like it's a team thing. And she's like, I don't want you to stop working on logology. That stressed me out. So we eventually talked about it and we said, okay, I'm going to go all in on the Twitter course for a time, you know. And she helped me, you know, she did the branding, obviously. Uh, she did, you know, she helped me a lot. Uh, um, she she put makeup <laughs> on my face every that's, time. That's, I was that's like, precious. I love that. She that you big. actually had makeup. <laughs> that's really cool. I have like I have a video of her putting makeup on my face. I thought we should use it as a you, joke, but like I haven't found a way it. to use it. <laughs> that would be really so. fun. <laughs> so she was but, worried. That's interesting. She, she was yeah, worried. We How was that conversation actually? Like were you finally deciding to so, do the So you know, she was worried. Telling that with that, like, was it a, a decision that you made as a team, or did you say like, no, I want to do this? Like, tell me about this conversation. Well, you know, in, in the team, like we kind of, uh, I'm still like responsible more for the business and for okay. the decisions. Because I think that's the reason we work well is that we're not trying to find, uh, to be agreeing in everything. For example, like she takes all the shots for right. the design thing. When there's a design decision to make, she makes it. And even if I don't agree, we do it. And for the business, I'm going to be more in the leading uh, seat. You're the CEO. So I think for that, it w I felt very strong. Yeah, yeah, more CEO. And I feel like it was important that, I mean, I could really see that, okay, even if we keep working on logology, even if we do everything that we want to do to grow it, it's going to be slow. You know, it's going to be slow. Like, it's not going to be a huge change. But I was like, okay, if we do this course right, there's a big probability that we just solve the yeah. money problem instantly. Like we yeah. just solve it. It's like, okay, we go from struggling to, okay, we make a living, it's done, now we can be relaxed and focus on yeah. other things. So I felt very strongly, so we committed. And then, you know, man, I worked so hard. Like I was, you know, I tracked my time. And so when we went back from vacation and in August, I was like, okay, I'm going to spend the next few months until I do the course. And the first week I did about 32 hours of work, which is in the course. pretty minimal for me. 
uh, yeah, uh, the course. And I kept improve, increasing that every week naturally until the week of launch. And I did two weeks straight where I did more than 70 Whoa. hours in a week. Two weeks straight. So I was literally, I mean, before launching the course, I was working to five in the morning, two in the morning, tired. So but there I was wanted no to work launch in Logology it. And then. No, right. I mean, Lucy was still working. She was adding logos, adding stuff, but I wasn't improving anything mm -hmm. on the product. And uh, yeah, so, but that was like, I, I, that was a bet. That was a bet. I was, we, I had this bet that I told Lucy, okay, I think this can work. I think like if we can do this, it's going to make everything simpler and then we can come back to Logology. She actually didn't have doubts about this. She thought it was going to work. She trusted me and she believed I had some good tips because I had helped her mm. and she knew I was going to do good work. So she thought the course was going to be successful, but she was worried that then I wouldn't have a reason to go right. back to Logology. And then she would be alone and she can't do it alone. So it was because she's just like, she's focused on the design, yeah. but she can't build a website or anything. So she she was worried about that. And the funny thing is, so eventually I was like, you know, but I, I was telling her, you shouldn't like assume that because I'm telling I really do want to do logology. And I and I told her that thing about I don't want to be just a <laughs> course guy. So I just don't want to. I want to build startups. That's the dream is to build startups. So I'm not gonna give up on that. But the funny thing is when we launched the course, is And like on the launch day, we I don't remember what we made. I think 3K on the first day and 3K the second day. Mm -hmm. Like it was like a lot of money, uh, you know. And so it was like, uh, we stopped, like we stopped working. Like we stopped, she stopped working on Logology because there was like, we're finally relieved after four years of grinding, you know, and yeah. we finally make some money. Like, I mean, We already make money, but we were still needing to use our savings. I know. You know, we had reached about 3K per month, which it's is a enough. lot, but it's we still enough. had our yeah. savings. So mm -hmm. it's not the same. And now we had finally across that point, you yeah. know, because we needed 5K per month and we were across that. And we're like, and she was the one who actually stopped working on Logology for yeah. a while because she was She's more like, relaxed. money. And then, and then actually, <laughs> yeah, basically she was like, finally, finally we like, And then, you know, and the best part, like, but that was just a spike. And the best part is like, because like, like, I think in November we made 30K. You know, That's so crazy. That's like okay. So crazy. let's, let's go step by step then. But you, you're ready to launch. Yeah, okay. And tell me about like the whole process of launching it. Like, what did you have in mind? How do you want to launch it? How did you prepare that? Okay. So that was the whole plan. And the reason why I overworked so much to launch at the last week of October is I had in the back of my head that I wanted to do a Black Friday promo okay. one month later. And I was like, if I have less than one month, it's going to be too close. You can't launch and do a Black Friday in two weeks because then people who paid full price, right. they feel pissed. Like it's, I was like, okay, I need, I, 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 initially I wanted to have two months, but because I was late and perfectionist, I was like, okay, I cannot have less mm -hmm. than one month. So I need to launch. So, and the plan of the launch is, I mean, I kept talking about it every day. Like every, I mean, not uh, directly on my main tweets, but like every time someone was talking about Twitter uh, algorithm or something uh, in my network or that I see somewhere, mm -hmm. I would give tips. And then over the, over during when I was uh, this five months doing the course and every time I did it, if somebody was, oh, wow, that's awesome advice. I would send them a reply saying, hey, you want me to send a DM when my course is out? And so I had a list of 150 people like that who I had helped over the months okay. and who had said yes to me sending a DM. So that was the first step. Second step is, you know, I built a lot of relationships on Twitter over time with a lot of right. big accounts. So I had a list of about 50 people in my network who had pretty big accounts who I had supported many times and who I knew they would support me. So when I launched the course, I actually did an early access three weeks late, earlier to make sure, you know, and it actually gave me some good insights to make the course way better. So I sold about 10 to very hardcore people who already told me they wanted the course. Did, did you give it for free or like did you sell But it? But then, no, 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 Everyone, I made it paid. Even it for these big accounts. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, no. I mean, maybe okay. three people I gave it for free. Uh, like huge accounts who 
like Justin Welch, I think I gave it for free, but he didn't even <laughs> read it. So, you know, but whatever. So it's um, it's just like um. I'm talking more like less big account, not like 200K like Justin Welch or, you know, uh, yeah. Andrew Gazdecki, like these huge ones, but more like, because uh, they didn't uh, interact with my tweets, but more like big to closer to my level, right. like Arvid, you know, and people like that. And like 10K people like mm -hmm. uh, Anna, or, you know, uh, Simon also, who is way mm -hmm. bigger actually. But yeah, you know, all these people who I knew. And what I did is when I launched, I sent uh, 50 DMs to these people. I mean, I sent them one week earlier. I said, okay, I'm launching next week. Uh, can I count on you to support me, retweet ideally and all that? And then when I launched, so I did the launch tweet and I sent them a DM saying, okay, it's time. And I was blown away because like, they all rushed yeah, to retweet and support I remember, me. Yeah. I didn't expect, but, and I think it's, be and I had so many retweets and I think it's because, um, I spent one year before yeah. that just building relationships, being nice, being supportive, being generous. And it's the fame, you know, it's the famous saying, like you just give, give, you give, 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 all. and then eventually <laughs> you ask. But you yeah, and when you yeah, ask, definitely. they say yes, because you gave so much. So I gave without thinking for so long that yeah. when I asked for once for some support, they gave it. And that was amazing. And then I also sent a DM to 150 people I had in my list who said they wanted to buy it. Yeah. So I sent a DM to everyone uh, saying, hey, the Did course is live if you want it. you ask for them to tweet and about And then... It? No, no, no. I just wanted to have a direct sale. That was just the goal of having the sale. And, um, and that was like end of October. And we made about 10K in one week, I think. That's incredible. And then November, mm -hmm. it kept going. Yeah. We kept having a few sales a day. I mean, a few between five yeah. and 20. So like some good days. But then after one month, there was okay. this Black Friday. And Black Friday, I had the plan to do something huge because I had experience with Logology last year. I did 50% discount and it was a huge success. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually this year, we did it too with Logology and we had a lot of, we made like uh, 1800 wow. uh, you know, like almost $2,000 with Logology in one week of Black Friday, like, like, like last year. And so I was like, okay, the thing is, the course is pretty expensive. It's like mm -hmm. 80 bucks. So big, you have two versions, right? Version you have the extended bucks. version for 80 bucks and then the other one. Yeah, but the ex like 99% of people get the big version. It's like almost nobody really? who gets the, the small I got, version. I got the small version. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to be honest, the, no, I know I know you did. I know you did. I was like, I was like Thiago is so fucking no, cheap. <laughs> and like, it's quite good. It's quite... I'm like, dude, no, I think you don't see it. I think maybe you don't. You don't no, I was just saying that yeah. even the small version. I was gonna say maybe you don't you don't really see the value. Well, no, I do. I def yeah. definitely see, I definitely see the yeah, value. Yeah, the small version um, is already. I think I'm just good. not in that phase where I want to invest that much on Twitter. Um, but yeah, yeah, I know. Then I, I know. thought, okay, I need something more. It's not even only because of the price. It's just like I want something shorter. You know, they like compressed, and it's really good. No, no, I yeah, mean, definitely, you, definitely. I'm I'm now curious about the big version because this small version has, has already so much details. You know about so many things. Then I'm curious about like, hey, okay, what, yeah, is, yeah. what, uh, what is left to say, you know? Um, yeah. And and I remember, but, um, by the way, you're saying that. But yeah. But... I remember, yeah, a lot of people tweeting about when the course first launched. I remember like a lot of people tweeting about it. And I, it, I, my assumption was that you actually gave it for free. I was like, okay, he, it is for free. Please tweet about it. Uh and it's 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 incredible. Oh no, actually, never. The fact that you actually they paid for it and then they tweet about it. Just because, first of all, the quality oh, of yeah. it, and second, because of the re relationships you created, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's it. That's it. And uh, yeah, and the thing with the Black Friday is, I knew for the month after the launch, a lot of people couldn't pay for it, you know, because it's eighty bucks the main version, so it's way more expensive than uh, all your Twitter courses. Like Daniel Vassalo's is like twenty. And all of it is uh, 50, right. but you can get it cheaper the in black different market. places. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> no, just like uh, Udemy and stuff like this. Podia, I think, whatever. I can but, get you a, <laughs> I can get your Arvid's uh, course. Yeah, and it's like 80. You know <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wasn't talking about that. But yeah, I see what you mean. Um, that's what kind of like the, the fear now is that people are going to, you know, 
torrented or something. Mm. So that's why I'm like feeling weird. But uh, but yeah, anyway, I knew a lot of people would want it, but couldn't afford it. So I knew Black Friday could be big because a lot of people were talking about the course, sending kind of like spontaneous testimonials on Twitter saying it was amazing. So I knew there was a lot of uh, demand. So Black Friday, I did something big. I did basically 40%. But if you retweet, I Whoa. give you 20% more. So it's like 60% off if you retweet, which was going to... And the goal was to get a lot of retweets, obviously. And it completely worked. Like we did uh, Black Friday, we did 10K Wait, or something. So, so y- and y- then, if you retweet uh, the tweet about Black Friday, so you basically say, hey... Here is, we have the course, we have 40% discount, but if you retweet this tweet, you get another extra 20%. So it's in total 60%. Wow, that's yeah, smart. Yeah, that's it. It's really smart. Yeah. Okay. And because like, especially when you have a link, it's, it's harder to get reach and to get engagement. Yeah. So that was a way to get engagement and it worked. And so the beautiful thing about it is because I, I went through this with Logology last year, we put it 50%. And what I noticed is that It created a lot of awareness. And then even after Black Friday was over, mm. we still sold way more than usual at the full price. And so I knew this could happen too. So like basically we did that. That's interesting. That's really and, interesting. Why is that? And then, you know... Why do you think that then, happens? That like so, you just gave a huge discount and then... Well, I think... That f- I guess you just bring more attention to your product. I think yeah. it's because there's way more awareness. Way more people know about it. Especially, you know, we send the stickers to people like uh, uh, in the... In the in the mm. po- post, you know, they get a letter with the sticker, yeah. the dominate Twitter sticker that they get, and they can tweet about it. Uh, so, like, basically, by selling so many units during Black Friday, you get way more people who spread the word. So, eventually, now we get like between two and five per day. Uh, on average, it's, it's uh, yeah, on average, we make 10k per month. That's f- like we did 10k, we did 11k in December. This month, we're on track for 10k. First month, we already did 10k. It's only November that we did 30 so, because of Black Friday. And so what, almost 100K? Like, no, almost... That's, uh, that's the best no, thing. Uh, 60, 50K? We, we, we are at 50K now. We are at 50K. That's incredible, in Dago. Congrats. Yeah. How, <laughs> how, Thanks, does it, how does it feel? You're saying that the peace of mind, right? Like something that I I totally get, especially when I started doing the freelance, like it's a game changer. When Once you st- put the money problem aside it makes the whole indie hacking experience so much more pleasant yeah you know you it's 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 another yeah it's, it's really really incredible yeah that's the big obstacle that you need to face that yeah. you need to go through and then now you can actually be healthy so you hard. can yeah. maybe work a little bit less if you need to uh maybe you also have more self-confidence you can yeah uh go to your father-in-law and say hey <laughs> look at this so Yeah, tell me, like, how yeah. how did it feel when you finally realized, whoa, we have made it, like, fucking four years of this fighting, building awareness, building our Twitter audience, building the startup, and now, bam, we are making 10K a month. How did it feel? How did it feel? So, you know, it feels like Frodo <laughs> at the end of Lord of the Rings is that you went through so much shit that you're not even happy. Like, as I know it's not what people want to hear and I feel bad for saying it, but like, we feel, we feel happy, but like, it wasn't a big win. It, I mean, it wasn't like we made it because it's more like, okay, 50K, that gives us one year of full salary paid by Logology. That's it. Because you know, like, that's the reality. Because like, we, because it's from the company, Then you have taxes. Then if you want to make a living, my wife and I, and stop using our savings, we can basically last one year with that money. And because we've went through so much shit, it's like, okay, that's awesome. We need to do better. Like we need to do more because it's not, you know, and uh, so we were happy. I mean, we went to the restaurant. <laughs> I bought a new phone. I bought some AirPods. I bought some cool shit, you know, a bit. Did you, you have know, a, a nice steak? Of, you know, celebrating. And you love, I know that you love steak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I always have a nice steak. I have a nice steak Bro, every started, day. That's I, like my. I tried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's called wa- uh, wagyu beef. I don't know if you know what this is. Oh wow! Exactly, yeah. man. That's yeah. It's like Japanese life changing. So now I'm imagining you always having, yeah, always okay. having wagyu beef. I, every, I haven't tried every this day. <laughs> that's too expensive. I can't. I can't. 
And you know, and that's that's what I was going to say. Like it's like because we know how hard it is and how uh, risky it is, we're like, okay, we have some. But it's what, basically I don't you understand because you're making 10k per month, can so that's a salary. That's MRR. Yeah, but like, who knows? I mean, who knows? Like, like literally, the day I launched is the day that Elon Musk yeah. uh, bought Twitter. What is your? And what, dude, what like, is your? You don't know what can actually, happen. You don't know what can happen. Did, are you worried? So I first, I first I was worried uh, because, dude, uh, I mean, but mostly because a lot yeah. of people were worried. You know, it was more like of a group thing of like everybody freaking out. But what I'm learning with Elon Musk is that he promises huge changes that yeah. he make a small iterative change. Like he says big stuff <laughs> and then in the end, oh, it's a small tweak. But like he's a big visionary guy. So he talks about big shit. He's a media guy. And right? then it's, it's, it's a small it's change. his way of getting attention, right? Yeah. It's really good, yeah. Yeah, and he's amazing at it. Like, he's... Uh, he's, And yeah, so yeah, so I'm not... Uh, uh, I'm not that much worried anymore. I think Twitter is going to keep, you know, on the kind of like steady... I think it's actually better than before because before that, the, there was already a lot of problems with Twitter. Now, at least you can see them moving a bit like in what? the right direction, fixing things. Uh well, for example, now the feed, they just changed it a couple of days ago. You have, uh, you know, you used to have to click on the special mm -hmm. store icon to see everything and not just your home feed. And now you can just toggle between those. It's just like, a, it's just easier right. to access. So I think it's going to be e better for people. But as I said, it's like an incremental change. I know that he wants to allow, allow to make big tweets now. Mm -hmm. I mean, without character limits, that should be out soon. So I think that would be interesting, uh, you know, but again, uh, and also it seems like they, they did fix a problem with the bots because, you know, he talked about, oh yeah, we're going to remove the bots. And I, and mm -hmm. I personally with a big yeah. account, I noticed it because for the past six months, I was having every day three <laughs> uh, NFT kind of bots asking me to support their shit. And once he said he was going to remove the bot, three days later, it disappeared. Wow. Now I don't have anything like that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, this is a change. And like literally like, and I didn't expect it because I know, you know, he promises yeah. shit, but it literally happened. He fixed it. Yeah. So, okay, that's one thing. So yeah, but again, it's small changes. But I think like over time, if he does one good small change every month, you know, right. in one or and, two and years, even if he updates Twitter's going to be even better. For instance, this is so, just an opportunity for you to sell expansions on your course. So I'm not going to sell it, but I plan to do free uh, updates. Uh, you know, I actually oh, sent yeah, out so uh, the last bonus yesterday. It it. saw... ah, it's not for got, you because you got the cheap with, version. <laughs> but, with something. Yeah. but yeah, 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 because uh, I, I, yeah, because ah, I won't okay, make people it. want to buy the expensive Sorry. version yeah. if they haven't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, and. Uh, no, because I noticed, and I had a lot of people reply to this email saying, oh, wow, mm -hmm. it's so cool that you keep updating the course. And I and I want to do that because for me, it's a long-term product. I treat, I see it exactly like a SaaS. So something where you add updates, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like this. That's really how I, I, I conceive it. So I have a plan to do like one month from now, like mm -hmm. uh, maybe like a 20-minute video. And then every time there's a need for it, like a couple of times, like three or four times a year, I'm going to add a new video that's going to be right. a new like algorithm update. And then, okay, what changed? What you should change in your strategy, yeah. uh, you know, to adapt. And I think it's going to be cool also long-term for like quality. Think, uh, Peter Level does the that. same with his book, right? So, yeah. The make book, he, he keeps, yeah, he keeps updating it. Oh, he does? He updates um, it? I didn't know. It's really good. That's awesome. It's really good. I want to buy it actually. So yeah. did your uh, perception of course makers changed? Like, do, do you appreciate them more? This Daniels Vasalos and... No? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because like so many people told me, wow, this is a great <laughs> course. I didn't expect. I thought it was going <laughs> to be shit. I'm like, yeah, so this confirms that most courses are shit. <laughs> no, no, right. this confirms that like there's so But it's the same with SaaS, that, right? Like, you also have you shitty SaaS. That people don't want to... Right? I guess, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, I just, yeah. 
I think it's easier to scam people with a course though, because you can't try yeah, it. But then you don't why have do a free people trial, buy it? You don't That's have stuff like that. You can just buy it's it. Just, it's interesting. No, they buy it. They buy it for a promise, but then if the promise isn't. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Uh, it doesn't have to be specific I think to courses. One thing that I've about, been about realizing, that. it's so interesting, is the perception of like money to value is so random. You know, for instance, again, paying 10 bucks for, or yeah, like 50 bucks true. for a logo, it's something that a lot of people say, like, no, 50 bucks. No, I, I'll just get an emoji. But then. Exactly. Yeah, but Why? 80 for a course, it's easy. That's yeah. so crazy. Or that like going painful. out, was painful going to out for yeah. some drinks and, and to eat some steak or something and you easily spend 100 bucks for two people or something and, and that's okay. For something that you eat once and then you shit and that's it. But but a logo that will be the face of your company for years to come, you don't want to spend 50 bucks. I, I oh, don't yeah. know. It's crazy. I have something about that. Because like, so yeah, so the logo, like, so basically we did the math and it's basically seven times harder okay. to sell a logo than a Twitter course. Uh, you know, so that's fucking harder. But like, we're working on... Make a uh, course on how to make, make logos. Easier. We'll talk about that later, maybe. <laughs> but like the thing about... <laughs> yeah, you know, I keep telling Lucy, but she doesn't want to, so... Let uh, me talk I with her. I'll awesome. convince her. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I would love that because... I think it would make you killing, but she doesn't. She, you know, Lucy, her dream is to be in her little cave and make logos yeah. all day and hide her novel. And sometimes <laughs> we go out to the museum. That's basically their dream life, you know. So it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, she doesn't want to do something else. But yeah, to your point about how people spend money differently, there are two. Uh, countries who never buy logos and it's people from okay. France way harder to convert even though I'm French so it's weird but you know well, India it's India, obvious it's like because they have it for Indian super man, cheap every time <laughs> they just ask their no, neighbor but you think it, I used to say I used to think that I I used to think that and then I launched the course and Indians buy it just like that I was like Fuck, I thought Indians were cheap, but no, they're just like, they don't give a shit about logos. That's just it. Yeah. Like, they think a logo is worth 10 bucks, but they think a Twitter course is worth 80. And it was very surprising to me. And I think it's about culture also, because uh, I had a lot of discussions with customers uh, from India um, who told me, like, graphic design media is like, very different. They have a different way of approaching it, and they don't imagine spending more than mm. 10 or 20 bucks on that. It's like impossible. And so I was amazed to see that uh, depending on the product, yeah. uh, you know, and the pricing, it's way different. I didn't expect, uh, like we have, we sold way more courses than to Indians than logos ever. It's, uh, you know, already. Why do you think this happens? Like what, what do you think connects value to a product in people's minds? It's like, is it society? Is, I don't know. I would love to figure this out. I think, you know, I think it's basically uh, the closer you are to the money, the higher the value. So like, for example, a logo, it's pretty far from uh. somebody making money. Once you buy a logo, it doesn't take you much closer to making money. But once you buy a Twitter course that promises to teach you how to grow an audience and get more sales, you but get closer you to really? money. You know what I mean? For example, a community of entrepreneurs, for example, a community doesn't get yeah. you much closer to money, just having friends and co-working, basically. But yeah. sponsoring a podcast where listeners can buy your product, that gets you closer but to money. Is, so I think it's about that. That's yeah. what people spend on. I mean, of course, restaurants and entertainment is different, yeah. but like usually yeah, in B2B I was thinking stuff, about that it's recently. way easier. So like, like the, the community, the cost of the community is, only, is not only the 10 bucks, it's for me, it's like the 10 bucks plus the time that people have to invest, right? So it's like going to a gym. Uh, going to a gym, True. you pay something, what, 50 bucks to get full yeah, access or whatever. Right. But then you need to commit to go there and every every week or twice a week or twice a week, whatever. So it's a huge cost mentally as well. Yeah, true. Uh, it's a huge cost. A sponsorship, yeah. it's super easy, right? You just pay it once. You don't 
and you don't think about it. It's done, and you'll get as, as oh, you right. said closer yeah. to the money. But the course, you still need to invest your time. So I I, I check the course. I I oh, have that, to like, a trick. consume there's all a, of it. Yeah. I need to. There's yeah. a lot of things. So I, I write down everything, and then I still I still need to apply it every day. And then maybe after a month I'll start seeing, or maybe after a week I don't know. But it yeah. takes a while to start getting the results. But there's a tricky thing and an ugly thing about courses, which is why there's so much scams, is that, sadly, yeah, okay. most people, they don't watch Do you it. have those stats? They just buy it because they... I don't have them because... But I know a lot of people start tweeting, hey, I'm finally going to yeah. watch Dago's course. And they bought it like two months ago. And, and I think it's because... Because I try to reflect to my own experience when I used to buy more courses and learning when I was in, in my early 20s. And I remember it feels like you're already, like it's kind of like you're paying to get the life that you want. Like by buying the course, you kind of get yeah. a bit of that already. Just by acquiring it, it's already putting you towards the goal yeah, of growing that or dopamine, or getting you already feel the or dopamine. Whatever. Like you it's buy it. helping you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already giving you something. Yeah. But then you don't really necessarily do it. For example, like uh, back when I launched my course, somebody else launched a product where like he had listed a bunch of virtual assistants that you could hire and he sold the list for like 30 bucks. And I bought it uh, and there was FOMO because there was like only 10 uh, units available. Buy it now. <laughs> so I bought it now and I still haven't used it. Yeah. Uh, because I thought I was going to need it, but I haven't needed it. So... That's the thing. I think a lot of people think, like they see the landing page, they think, okay, this is really useful. This is going to help me. I need this. So they buy it, but it's so they haven't needed it yet. The promise. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I th and I think that's the difference with a logo. Because like a logo, uh, you you act, it's either you need it or you don't. It's not like yeah. I might need this. I might need a logo in three months. Yeah, but like in three months, you will have, a different idea yeah. of what you need. So you can't buy and, it now. And as you said, it's not the same change. feeling. It's not so the same, like, as you said, like, right this promise, let's say, like, buying a book, for instance, <clears throat> um, a physical book. You look at, at the book and you be like, yes, yeah, yeah. I bought it. And then you never read it. But just by having it, you feel, it's hard to explain. But you, yeah, as you said, you feel closer to your goal, right? But with the logo, I don't feel it like, I don't feel like that. Yeah. But why? You feel like you made <laughs> so progress. Random. I don't know. No, you don't it's, feel that. We need to yeah. get a psychologist to speak about it because you should be. It's, it's You are also closer to your goal, but it's a different feeling. Write Fuck, it down. This is Write giving you a new idea for logology. And then in, 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 a, in a couple of months, we'll be <laughs> speaking about it again. <laughs> I'm like, that, that, you know, that should be, that should be the parameter. You know, that should be the, when you build a product, you should think, is there something in my product that makes someone feel that if they buy it and, and not use it, still gain something? That's like genius. If you start, you know, approaching right. products this way. For example, Logology right now, it's logo. Right. So if you buy it and don't use it, but you have nothing. With courses. But the pivot we're going to do with is going to well, be more about... With the course as well, if you buy it and don't use it, you also get what was nothing, that? right? Yeah, okay, you get that feeling. No, you do. do you like we just it? said, you do. You do get the feeling... Yeah. No, I'm talking about that. I'm talking about this subtle thing. And I, if you build a product that has that, and that gives you, for example, like uh, before I joined a wannabe entrepreneur, I was in right. a different community that was paying that was called Mega Maker. And I still exist. It's like 300 bucks. And it's huge, right? It's one time fee. But I paid it because uh, the guy showed that there was like the guy who created Product Hunt in the members. And I thought that by buying, I would like get closer to this, closer to these big guys, and this would be helpful uh, in my business forever. So I paid, even though I only spent a couple of months on the community and then I stopped. But, you know, it's because I felt closer to actual making money. Even if I didn't use it, I was part of this community and, and the yeah. value was like the big, uh, big star guy I was, that was a part of it. So, you know, I think if we think of products this way, and now I'm thinking of Logology, I'm thinking, okay, Logo doesn't do that. But if you give people a full guide on how to design their startup or like yeah. there's something they can say, oh, I will always need that. You know, I will always need that so I can buy it. And basically something that they think, 
it's always going to be useful. And if I buy it now, or, I'm, I'm, I'm already making progress. Uh, maybe not the course, but I That's think like you just said thing. something really interesting, which is like putting you in the same bucket as these other successful people. That's also what I feel what what I feel with the Twitter course yeah, or that's something another like this. Thing too, yeah, yeah, it yeah. puts you in the same bucket as what you want to be. Oh, okay. right? Like when you read a book about entrepreneurs, for instance, or startups, you'd be like, Yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to work in a startup. So the fact that I buy it, I I can show the world, even if I'm actually not showing, I can show the world that I'm there. I'm committed to doing that. I'm closer to that people. Um uh, so maybe you can even do the same with logology. You can like take the the people that used it. Actually, I don't know if you have this in the website. You know these kind of things like used by, and then you show um, the companies that are already using it. Yeah, but like I don't even have yeah, that. Yeah, Twitter. On my, everyone on my everyone Twitter looks at Twitter website. and they're like, okay, all the so big ones, all the makers are there. Like you, yeah, Levels, true. Arvid, uh, Simon, everyone are there, and you and you know that if you make it on Twitter you made it somehow, you know? So you get the course, you're like, yeah, I'm closer to that. You know, yeah, I'm in this true. club. Maybe. Oh, that's that's good. It's a good, uh, something for us to test and speak about it in the, our next conversation. Uh, join. <laughs> it's funny. It's always the best conversation. Uh, cool. <clears throat> Every time I learn something new, I'm like, oh shit, this is giving me ideas for the next year. And then I'm going to, and then I get richer. So I hope next time we talk, I would, we would be making yeah, like hopefully. 50K a month based on this discussion. Yeah. You know, that would be funny. That, that's the goal. That's, and that's, and then you can sell it as like, when you, you be like a startup coach. And when yeah. you talk with Tiago, you know, I you think unlock the next that's kind of the goal always of this podcast. The wannabe entrepreneur, one of the reasons why it's called wannabe entrepreneur is because I feel that we are always learning how to become better entrepreneurs, right? Like the fact that you just uh, went out of your comfort zone to start a new course. Yeah. This is, you learn so much now about things that you couldn't learn by just working in logology. Like you learn out not only the, yeah. the video production, but as well that, that people are more willing, like Indians are more willing to buy courses than uh, than logos, right? This is a huge thing. This is something that you can use logos. now. Yeah. Um, to explore and, and to do the same kind of tests you do with Twitter algorithm, you can do it with entrepreneurship, right? Um, so that's that's why I love having these conversations. Yeah. Um, I'm just checking here my... Oh, yeah. One thing that I need to cross from my list is success cases. I don't know if you remember someone tweeted that and they said like, yeah, I want to know who actually succeeded with that course. And you said like, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, I saw you. So tell me. <laughs> do you... Do you Oh, dude, like, I just have to open. I have, like, 200 bookmarks of people who said... On Do you Twitter, have anyone that I already sh can um, has shown some, like, progress? Like, s some significant progress? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of people get significant progress. I mean, the course is really ideal for people who are already very active. Right. But they just, like, something missing. They're just like very active and they're just like mm -hmm. something escapes them and they don't understand why they're stuck. And the course okay. explains it and solves it and then they take off. And best example is probably Kyle. Uh, you know, you know this guy. I don't, I never know how to, Kyle Goley. Uh, you know, uh, let me send oh, you yeah. in the chat Found here him. so you can see. I sent you the link directly. Yeah. And you know, you, you know this guy, right? You've seen it. You've seen him. Yeah. And he was basically stuck at a couple thousand followers for, for years. And he bought the course. 11K and he, now. Almost 12K. He took yeah. off. Like, it solved. He was doing a couple of things wrong. And let me see, because he, he gave me a huge testimonial. So let me see the testimonial that he did. But basically, he, it changes everything. And he got way more sales of his startup, like everything that I promised on the landing page. Basically. So wait, uh, let me see. Uh, and there's less right. impressive examples, obviously, of people who, are, who start with a small account. But then eventually, they just, uh, but they just grow way faster. And I think, the, so wait, let me see, because you asked for success stories. So... Kyle, where is Kyle? Kyle, let me find it. Because I still haven't added testimonials to my to my website because it's uh, you don't need them, right? To add. Your Twitter profile 
Uh, it's uh, the testimonial. Yeah, also because so I don't really check need out them, you so. check check you out on Twitter and they see, well, that's huge engagement. So that's what I want, <laughs> right? Okay, so let me send you that. So yeah, so he did a testimonial that basically said, I started to take Twitter marketing more seriously last month. I bought Dago's Twitter course and applied all the tactics. Results, almost four times the impressions. Sales of my startup were also up four times. Now I'm That's about incredible. to reach 10K followers. Liked so, it. So let me yeah, find you another one. This so one it doesn't sound uh, like it's just one. Burp is the only one. Mm -hmm. That's the haters. That's the only guy. <laughs> Do you have haters already? Do yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me something that I was, it's interesting. I was, one of the things I was listening is that you hide, you're talk, talking about the responses, the answer, and how you hide uh, certain answers that you think are not um, contributing to the tweet. Uh, do you have a lot of haters already? People, they'll be like, Dago, you're a fraud. Do you have these kind of things or no? <laughs> no, I expected them. But really, I had a few people who asked to refund uh, because they didn't. I mean, but, you know, it's mostly people who mm. came from Gumroad Discover, like didn't know anything, had no context about who I was, what I was going to do. So they just saw the Gumroad page and they bought and then it was like, oh, it's not what I wanted. So it's understandable. Although some guy bought it yeah. and gave me like I almost have only five stars on Gumroad. It's like. 90 ratings, it's like 88 five stars, one two stars, and one three stars. And one guy who gave three stars, he sent me an email. I, I asked him, I was like, okay, I saw you gave three stars. Can you tell me why so I can make it better? And it didn't feel good because he basically said that, I don't know how to say, but he said that, yeah, you're a good looking guy and all shit, but like it would have been better if you had mm. shown like more examples instead of just you talking. So he basically kind of like shamed me okay. for like showing my face as if it was a way to, you know, because he said you're good looking, which uh, <laughs> was completely okay. You that's just, fucking weird <laughs> to say that, you know, like you that just, was you weird. Just I sell, like sell it because you are, <laughs> you know, you are, you're like, beautiful you're good man, looking. So that's why you are selling it. It's not because you have. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 he, no, he wasn't saying that because, like, he it's not why he bought, but like, he said the course itself, since it's yeah. just me talking, mostly, uh, he was disappointed. It wasn't more like, I guess, just me, just a screenshots yeah. or like stuff like this. I don't know. So that was that. That, that felt weird, but like, I didn't have hate. Uh, I think though. Oh yeah, though when I started announcing it, I remember a, a post on Indie Hackers. Okay. Uh, that I wasn't a part of, but like people talked about yeah. me. So I was like, oh, wow, shit. Uh, yeah, people okay. talk about me now. Okay, cool. So this is something that was, uh, that was cool. That I was happy, obviously, because it seems like, okay, uh, I'm famous. Awesome. But like at the same time, uh, people were like saying, like, because, uh, because I wasn't there, they was like shitting <laughs> on me with no problem. Like it was very weird. Like, like people saying, oh yeah, he's doing a course now. He's just a fraud. Like uh, somebody said that actually. So then I replied, I said, you know, but like, but it's yeah. not very weird to be like, uh, you know, at the third person like this. Like, I'm just like, uh, now I'm something. Somehow. Now it's like, now you know this how, guy, but it's not like a the person big, anymore. you know, Elon Musk and like the yeah, like and famous that was very people weird. feel. Where you like, you just don't connect them with people. You just, when you. Yeah. That's it. Like you don't see someone. And I think for me, it was weird. Because like when I started Twitter, and all my tweets yeah, are about yeah. being pretty authentic, right? It's about sharing personal and authentic stories. But still, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's funny how quickly people can assume bad intentions. Like, they saw that I was doing a course, a few people, yeah, they yeah. immediately assume uh, it's like, it's like the, a scam or something. Yeah. Immediately. And that was... Uh, so that's the, that's why I, I didn't do it's do like it the in neighbor the first place. I was scared if of that. If you never so met yeah. your neighbors and they are making a lot of noise, you start like, oh, these people they are terrible i hate them and then when you actually meet them and you see that they are nice people uh, and you'd be like okay maybe there's a reason why they're making noise and so it's exactly the same if they don't know you from twitter they don't have a good relationship with you they'll be like yeah this guy is just annoying yeah. but when they know you they'll be like okay yeah, no actually it's not so good so bad and <laughs> uh, 
yeah, well, that's one thing that, I also have it, curiosity yeah. about is the distribution. So, so you used yeah. Gumroad. Is it only Gumroad that you're using? Why? Why don't you like yeah. have your own website only Gumroad, yeah. and then avoid paying Gumroad the um, the fees? I think I wanted first to have the the reassurance of Gumroad for people. Because, you know, you see, yeah, I think so, Gumroad so now is a big brand, people big brand. know, so they, especially they, in this space. Really so, because it's quite big, uh, right? I think, I think, you know, maybe that's my mistake. Maybe that's my mistake, but because I grew pretty big, pretty fast, right. I still need to catch up to how people perceive me, maybe. So I always, I'm afraid to look like a fraud. I'm afraid to, because I still feel like. Huh. I mean, I had a hundred followers like less than two years ago. So like, it's hard to know uh, that people can see me uh, as an authority. It's hard for me to uh, kind of like, okay, really hmm. uh, understand it and realize it maybe. But at the same time, I think it's good to have yeah, a third party. So how much money know, do you pay I, them? Because you also have the ratings. For, for and, uh, it's quite big, right? Like, if, there was even some, some people speaking about it recently. No, they improved, they, they increased it and it's going to be even worse uh, starting next month. But I was paying them basically 5% plus the transaction fee. 5% so it's not, of 10K doesn't seem that big. It's still at 500 bucks. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I pay, I pay them fees. They also handle affiliates for me because I make a ton of sales with affiliates. Wow. I made like yeah. out of the 50K okay, we made, good. I made yeah. at least 5K from affiliates. So. That's a big thing. And they handle that. And it's and they handle it very gracefully because I have affiliates for Logology. Mm. Every month I have to go to PayPal, pay guys individually. It's a mess if, uh, you know, uh, and it's expensive. This uh, affiliate service costs me 50 bucks a month or something plus 9% commission on the transactions. So I'm happy that Gumroad does it for me. And yeah, I think, you know, I think it's not about looking for the cheapest I think it's about, okay, what's convenient? And it's very convenient for me uh, to use Gumroad. They also okay. handle the newsletters. Like when I no, send the email uh, to everyone, it's I was just, just, just so fucking like, easy. One other option would be so create easy. your own website, uh, uh, have some Stripe integration, and then put put the tweets, like create, use for instance, Fabwall or something to show yeah. all the tweets uh, of people com commenting about your product. And that's enough. Uh, that's better than reviews for me. Like just reading real tweets from people. Um, and... That's what I've done. That's what I've done with my like step by step guide, and it's nothing no, no, compared like with what you just did. But uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, no, but I, I think uh, it's. Imp I also like, for example, like I updated the course, so I changed the files yesterday. Right, I made an update. True. You know, I can just upload the files to Gumroad. I create different types of files for different types of packages. I mean, yeah, if you want to build right. your own solution, you're yeah. going to spend more, you're going to spend weeks on it at least. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. also, Gumroad brings me sales with their Discover section, okay. which uh, is about two or three percent of my sales. Oh. So it's not nothing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but I think, to be honest, I think like they literally have no competitors. People say, "Oh, you should move to uh, Lemon Squeezy or like these competitors," but like it's completely different. Like Gumroad is so simple; they take some money, but like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't want to worry about it. I'm like, I just see it as a fee, you know. Like it's like when uh, when I have a sale on Logology, I have three percent yeah. Stripe fee. That's just like I can't. It's always there, and so yeah, Go Mode is like eight percent fee, but like they handle way more stuff than Stripe. They do affiliates. They do the newsletter for me. They do the. They bring me some sales with Discover, mm -hmm. and they um, and they handle the files and all that easily. And I also have ratings because if you put ratings on your site, you can always think, okay, they cherry yeah. pick them. But on your Gumroad, you can see like it's actual people. So you, it's more trustworthy yeah. to see someone with five yeah, stars know, rating on Gumroad than on his own website. Sense. I think you argued really well you know, so. <laughs> in favor of Gumroad. Um, yeah, man. I, I I think the one last question I have for you uh, is a, a little bit... So what I think probably the, the best feature or the, the, I think you mentioned that as well in your course that the best action, if people could only do one thing to improve their uh, Twitter growth is the engaging, right? Like engaging more, 
with other accounts, uh, making sure to reply to everyone, all of that. It's something really, really important. Um, and and you also there's a, a part where you start describing the yeah. fact that okay, if you stop going on, if you stop tweeting, you'll eventually lose your engagement. And I would like to discuss this with you because yeah. my approach is more and more that that's unfair for me, you know, because there's ways to avoid it as well. Like as you use the, for the example of having schedulers, but it can be really bad for your mental health as well. If you feel that you need to always be tweeting, you, you get super connected to the, to it. Uh, and then if you feel oh, as no. well that yeah, your yeah. audience and your friends are not actually yours, but they are borrowed by this platform that if you stop engaging, if you're, yeah, if you stop engaging, you're punished and then you don't get access to your friends. Um, what is your perspective oh. on that? Well, first, for example, I haven't tweeted in four days. Okay. Even scheduled. So I'm taking a break right now. So I think it's okay to take breaks. Actually, I think I'm one of the only accounts that have that many followers that take breaks. You know, because uh, most people, they keep scheduling even when they're away. And when I'm away, I don't tweet. And because I think, you know, if you do it properly, if you just... Uh, let's say I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it's a problem. Like it's normal that if you stop being active, you lose some priority. And it's not because you lose priority. It's because others yeah. who were tweeting when you were gone gain priority over you because people engage with them and they didn't have an opportunity to engage with you. So the Twitter algorithm basically learned that, okay, for the past two weeks, uh, this person is engaging with these accounts, so I'm going to show it more of these accounts. So even though they were engaging with you before, when you come back, yeah. you have kind of a gap that was created with these other people who they kept engaging with. What? Does and it? that makes sense. Uh, and makes also, sense. I think, when you know, when you I come mean, back you from your break... Friends. It's, like, it's like... Well, well, in life, as you said, it kind well, of no, happens, because, right? It does but make sense. When you, when you have your friends, you should allow them to have a break, and then when they return... Why Why would they lose their engagement? Well, you do. You don't lose it. You don't lose, you don't lose everything. You don't lose right. everything. You, you lose mostly uh -huh. the, the less involved people, basically. Uh, and, but like the more you leave, the more people you lose. Uh, it makes sense. But uh, I guess, I think it's because people, it's always like this weird thing. Like when people say, oh, you lose, it's not fair. It's like, yeah, but like how... How, how do you think it could work? Because right. like, it's not like you're with friends. It's not like 10 people. It's like millions of people. And most people, they follow hundreds of people. And when you follow hundreds of people, you can't see everything. You know, it's normal. Like, let's say you follow 500 people. How can you see everything that everybody tweeted on one single day? You can't because you're not going to spend enough time on yeah. Twitter. You know? So Twitter has to prioritize. So it's going to prioritize based on the one you're most engaged with. So when you take a break, the longer you take a break, the more at risk you are that eventually Twitter considers that, okay, you haven't, uh, people are not engaging with you and all that. So like, I think mm -hmm. as long as you see Twitter as a way to build relationships and connections, and when you come back from your break, you just spend a bit more time than usual just connecting with others instead of just tweeting. Well, if you do that, you're just going to go get back your reach very quickly. Like, I noticed that. You know, that's why I took a break in the mm. Christmas. I'm taking a break now. I took a so full feel, week break you don't in July. you feel somehow uh, addicted one to it? You feel it? And yet you, you can you can be have a healthy relationship with, with the platform and still grow your uh, Twitter reach. It's hard to say. I think when I'm in it, it's very, it can, I mean, I don't know if it's addictive, but, you know, when you get a lot of people replying to you, connecting with you, it's exciting. Like, it's just exciting. Yeah. You get a lot of engagement, a lot of people who give a shit, who are connecting. So you want to reply, you want to connect, and it just takes time, and it takes brain space and mental space, and it's uh, very yeah. exhausting. 
that's for sure. Like when I started tweeting, I was spending 10 hours a day. So I know I was, you know, crazy. But uh, yeah, no, I, I don't see it that way now. I mm -hmm. think now I think I can just get by with like two hours per day, which is already huge uh, for most people. But it's, uh, I don't know, I see it. I just like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just so much opportunities, so many people who you can meet. So I, I don't really mind. And I think, also, I think the mistake people make when they take a break is that, for example, you're usually going to take a break uh, at the time everybody takes a break, like in, ho in the summer holidays or at Christmas. And yeah. it's actually the time where a lot of people, they stop Twitter entirely. Like a lot of people are just going to stop and they not come back. But then some others will come and join in their place. And I've been on Twitter active for one, one year and a half. And yeah. I see so many people come and go. Like it's it's always like this. So it's also why you might have lost some engagement. Because mm -hmm. like when you come back from a break, a lot of people, they changed. And I think also it's unfair to say, okay, mm -hmm. we need to own our audiences. Like people compare it to email newsletters. But like it's very different because like Twitter is like a public square. That's how Elon Musk says about it, actually. But like, it's like a public square. So like, there's like everyone. It's not just people who follow you. It's mm -hmm. their neighbors. It's their siblings. It's the people that follow them but don't know you. And that's the beauty of Twitter. Like you, yeah. It's not a community. It's it's a community, but it's also a town square. It's public. It's open and it's flowing and it's moving. So it's funny when people say, "Oh, I only reached uh, 10 percent of my followers." Yeah, sure, but like sometimes you're going to reach, but even when you reach, let's say, the same number of impressions as the number of followers, yeah, it's not going to be your followers. It's going to be your followers and tons of strangers. Mm -hmm. So it's a different thing. It's like it's about, it's, uh, it's about spreading, you know, content and making connections and yeah. meeting new people all the time. But I guess it's also a little about bit that. scary. It's about one-on-one uh, -on -one relationship long so for term. Instance, as a, with a podcast, yeah, it's incredible because I have a reach of maybe around 200 people per 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 week and uh, but these 200 people they're always there you know they are so okay. faithful they're like yeah Tiago, i'm here listening to whatever i have to say every yeah. damn week uh that's that's definitely incredible I, I love that feeling aren't you scared that tomorrow twitter shuts down and because that if that happens i mean that's that's how oh, you yeah, are death, bringing traffic death, yeah. to your products right Yeah. No, that's no, why we made it. Like, felt like you, we made, made it, it when we made 50K. Because it. it seems like, yeah, okay, this is a... Yeah, but like, it's a big word to oh, say we made it. Like, for me, okay. we made it is like, we can retire. Okay. That's like, we made it. You know, like, but like, like, you know, the big, big, we made it. But let's say, yeah, we, we did have success and I'm very happy about it. We, we were successful, definitely. But yeah, I think it's... Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like startups, like it's, you can never be sure, like it's just always changing. So I'm, I'm very optim Same. optimistic about Twitter. I actually trust uh, Elon Musk and what he's doing. I mean, I'm not a fan of him, yeah. but like, I, I think it's, he's doing good. Like he's doing, he's going to the right Do you have direction. plans of, of taking that and audience? I trust him. So that's uh, okay. With you, like backing up that but, audience, maybe with a newsletter or you have a podcast now as well uh, with James, like that's also some, somehow a way to take this audience away of, yeah. from Twitter. Uh, do you have plans to do that? Okay. No, I don't. I know I should, but <laughs> I... But you say you I don't want to write newsletters. <laughs> I fucking don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, but I... I guess to answer your earlier question now, I think I'm still addicted a bit yeah. to Twitter because I'm addicted to its conversations all the time. And that's very exciting. And newsletter is just like one way. It's like a course. And right. it's cool to do a course, but I wouldn't just want to be doing that. I love to have Well, people can I return the yeah. emails to you, right? Or And uh, yeah, so I don't... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, it's not the same. Uh, but like, I think... Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm used to the uncertainty now too. Like I'm used like with logology, like I'm used to the uncertainty. So, you know, bring it on. Like maybe yeah. Twitter will collapse. Maybe Facebook will collapse. Maybe, you know, whatever. Maybe 
chat G maybe like we're going to spend two years mm -hmm. investing on SEO yeah. and chat GPT is going to replace Google. Yeah, but one thing you know, that, that is good know, from you know, this you, is that now you you're taking know. 10K out um, of this Twitter course so, and maybe now you're able to actually increase your savings instead of burning them, uh, which is really important. So now you, you have this that's what I'm, that's for what one doing, year yeah. and that's already really good. And then you already have get some nice savings that prepare you for a potential uh, Twitter crisis or something. So, that's exactly it. You know, I think that that's a really good point, and that's that's the mentality. It's like I don't think we made it right. in that sense because I don't think it's over. I don't think it's like easy now. I think it's easier for now, and it's a good stepping stone, and it's a huge accomplishment, and something that can help us for the next steps. But I think the mental the mindset is. Everything can change. You know, I have a friend like uh, from Twitter, Shaba uh, Kisi, I, I think his name, or Shaba Kisi. Okay. Uh, he's uh, he's Romanian, I think. No, not Romanian. Fuck. It's horrible because like, if I mix up countries, okay. it's going to be insulting. So whatever. He's from Eastern Europe. Amazing guy. Okay. Uh, developer. He's big. Like He's Sub like 100 I, I don't even know how something. to spell it, man. <laughs> uh, you see him? Yeah, that's yeah let word. me see. It says C S A. Okay, I sent you a link. But you know, this guy, he used to be big on Google. Yeah. And he told me like yeah, he's he's pretty old, he's like uh, 45 or 50, I think. Mm -hmm. And he used to have a big content business uh like 20 years ago. He was on and he was making like he had like 500k traffic to his website every month from Google. And in three months, Google That's did crazy. two updates and he ended at like 25k per month instead of 500. So like 20 times less in three months, his business disappeared. And so the way he approaches Twitter uh, is very, and he's like, you know, he knows and he shared that with me when we talked, like he knows it can end. And and I think I know that too. You know, I know it can end. And so the mentality is that everything will end eventually. So just prepare by having savings, preparing that, and always doing new stuff and staying kind of like on the fence of learning, uh, discovering. Because even if everything uh, stops, mm -hmm. well, now I know how to do a course exactly. and I know how to sell a course and I know how to build an audience, which I could do on any other platform. And I've acquired all that thanks to Twitter. So even if Twitter were to disappear, it's something I can take with me. Yeah. So the mistake would be to think I arrived and we're already successful and we've made it and it's over and then relaxed and then we just lose our yeah. edge, I think. And I think that's also why yeah. we're entrepreneurs. Is we like this adventure. You know, We like this. I, at least I do. And so there's this thing about, okay, we stay on the fence and you know, I don't know what the future holds, but I know... I will be ready for it and I will be excited to, yeah. you know, I mean, I would be happy Bro. to do the same thing on TikTok. If Twitter, if Twitter was disappears, disappear. I would do the First same on TikTok because it's the most exciting social media for me. I my LinkedIn Twitter. account. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> they call the pictures. No, no, I would go to TikTok because like, like, I don't want to hey, go too busy, too much business. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, not that. Ah, Dago, thank you so much. Ah, that's man. why I don't um, go on LinkedIn. It's too. It's uh, you are already uptight. a regular here in the in the podcast, and it's great. And every time you return, you have a more exciting news, more followers. Yeah, we learn something with each other. So I guess you'll keep returning. Thank you so much, man. 